A unique feature of the Ritchie brace is the custom placement of the hinge axis according to the patient's own anatomic axis of their ankle joint. In other words, we place the hinge pivots exactly according to the patient's anatomy, which describes their own unique ankle hinge axis angulation. We know from previous research that the ankle hinge passes directly beneath the tip of the medial and the lateral malleolus. And yet that alignment of the medial and lateral malleolus varies considerably from patient to patient. It is very important for the practitioner to localize the distal most tip of the medial and lateral malleolus and mark that landmark with a ink pen that will transfer to the cast for the lab to determine the exact location to place the hinge pivot. So what I'm going to do is carefully palpate this patient's medial malleolus and lateral malleolus and find the distal most margin of that bony landmark. As you can see with this patient, many of these patients have edema around the ankle which at first glance makes visualization of the anatomic outline to be quite difficult. But if we palpate starting along the calcaneus with the thumb and move up, right about here I can feel the distal margin of the medial malleolus and as I work my thumb around I can find the anterior, inferior, and posterior margin through the edema. And so what I'm going to do is just take my felt pen and mark these margins and basically draw an outline of the malleolus and make a large dot where I determine the distal most centered point of that medial malleolus is with a dot also outlining the shape of the medial malleolus. I'm going to move forward and bisect the first metatarsophalangeal joint. This allows the lab to determine the length of the foot plate of the orthosis, which is very important. By marking the first and the fifth metatarsophalangeal joints, the lab can determine how distal to extend the foot plate without impinging on motion of the metatarsophalangeal joints. So in a similar way, I'm going to move lateral, and again we have a fair amount of edema here, but as I palpate, I can feel that distal margin right here of the lateral malleolus, and I'm going to make a little dot, and I'm going to move posterior, and I'm going to move anterior as I follow up around the lateral malleolus and I will again draw the outline and I will make a large dot right at the distal most tip of the lateral malleolus for the lab to determine where the hinge axis is located. Similarly I will move distal and I will bisect the fifth metatarsophalangeal joint. I'm going to demonstrate the uh, Ritchie Brace neutral suspension casting technique with plaster of Paris splints. This is really a slight derivation of the normal neutral suspension cast technique for custom functional foot orthoses, also known as the slipper cast technique but we're going to add one additional step and that is we're going to put a layer of splints just above the malleoli to capture the shape of the lower leg. So instead of two plaster splints, we will use three splints. We've already marked the essential landmarks, the medial malleolus, the lateral malleolus, the first and fifth metatarsophalangeal joints. We have the patient positioned properly so that we can put them into a neutral suspension uh, uh, position at the subtalar joint and mid-tarsal joint with minimal motion of the leg. So we're ready to begin. 
I suggest that you actually dip the plaster splints ahead of time in the water and lay them out ahead of time so that they can be placed on the foot and ankle in rapid succession. So we're going to get our splints ready here. And we're going to start with the proximal splint. We're going to work out some of the plaster. It's important to make sure your splints are really wet. By getting them wet ahead of time, the uh, plaster itself is fully activated and gives a much better molding of the splint to the anatomy. We form a slight hem at the top of it, and we're going to start just above our markings of the skin lines and bring the splint over the front of the ankle. Now this is an important step right here. What I'm doing is folding the splint back on itself, leave, leaving the two medial and lateral edges just barely overlapping across the front of the ankle joint. I'm now going to take splint number two, and we're going to form what most of you are familiar with as the typical slipper cast for a foot orthotic. We're going to start just above the malleoli, and we're going to have these two pieces just overlap over the dorsum of the foot. We're going to have the patient hold their foot slightly dorsiflexed from their relaxed position, and we're going to work the medial side of the splint into the arch, and then we're going to move the lateral side over as a flap. And now we're ready for the final piece which will go out over the toes and the forefoot. Uh, I like to mold some of the plaster or work it into the fabric ahead of time. That assures a better molding of the splint to the foot. We're going to lay it just gently over the tip of the toes, making sure that we don't move the toes up or down across the metatarsophalangeal joints. We lift the lateral side of the splint up, mold into the foot, and the sulcus, and then flap the medial side back over the lateral. And I like to mold all of the excess plaster material right up into the sulcus. And this is real important here, molding all of this up into the malleoli, the medial arch, get as good of a contour as you can to the arch, the heel, and the metatarsals. As the plaster begins to cure, we're ready to go ahead and position the patient properly. So we have the patient just relax their foot and let it just drop comfortably. You can lift the toes either with this grip technique or with this technique. Either way, I'm lifting the fourth and fifth toes up, locking the mid-tarsal joint. And now I'm going to just gently plantar flex the first ray. As the patient relaxes, we're going to remove that forefoot supinatus. I'm removing the supinatus, and I'm holding the foot still at a neutral position of the subtalar joint. And what's very essential is, I'm, with the best of my ability, I'm lifting and locking the mid-tarsal joint. It's a slight dorsiflexion load of the distal lateral aspect of the forefoot. I'm lifting the fourth and fifth toes, slightly dorsiflexing the ankle joint, and I'm holding everything still while the plaster cures. It's essential to make sure the patient's relaxed so that you can push down on the first ray. Uh, in a sense, we're really everting the forefoot against the rear foot in a neutral position at the subtalar joint. We're doing our best to create a everted forefoot to rear foot deformity. Now the plaster has just about cured. And we are now ready to remove the cast. One of the drawbacks to the plaster cast technique is that we have to pull this cast off the foot and ankle without distorting the diameter or the relationship of the upper part of the cast to the lower part as we pull it distal. There's a tendency for this to open up inappropriately as I'm going to pull it off the foot and ankle. So I'm going to use these overlap points of the plaster here and here to serve as my reference to more or less bring the cast back into proper position once I've pulled it off the foot. 
So we will minimally expand the cast anteriorly over the uh, leg and dorsum of the foot to minimize the amount of widening. And then we will try to pull purely distal down off of the leg, off of the ankle, off of the foot. And we can see that the cast has widened and all we have to do is just bend it back to where those reference points had been, here, and back over here. And we can see that really we've minimally distorted the cast here and here and probably not distorted at all the width of the malleoli, which is most critical. So by carefully pulling the cast down off of the foot, this area shouldn't widen too much. And finally, we want to look inside the cast and make sure that you can see the skin markings, both medial and lateral, and that the two dots have transferred to the inside of the plaster so the lab will know where to locate those hinge pivot points in the brace fabrication.